Hi to wherever you are. Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on multiply fractions. Our objective is to multiply fractions and mix numbers too. A real world link talks about lunch, one of my favorite subjects. There are 12 students at the lunch table. Two thirds of the students ordered a hamburger for lunch. One half of those students that ordered a hamburger put cheese on it. Not sure who put feta or cheddar or American, we just know it's cheese. Either way, in step one, draw an X through the students that did not order a hamburger. Well, that's going to be this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy. As you can see, this is broken into thirds. We have one, two, three equal rows. And so we can cross off one of the three rows of students who did not order a hamburger. Then draw a C on the students that ordered cheese on their hamburger. So we're down to these eight. And we're being told one half of those students that ordered a hamburger put cheese on it. So I'm going to put the cheese on these, this person, this person, this person, and this person because we have eight people left and half of those is just the four. So our answer, what fraction of the students at the lunch table ordered a cheeseburger in right and simplest form? Well, it's this row here and it's one out of the three rows, or I have one, two, three, four out of the 12 students. Now that's not in simplest form yet, so if I divide by four on top and bottom, on numerator and denominator, four divided by four is one, 12 divided by four is three, so one third. Awesome, one third. What is half of two-thirds? And right in simplest form, well, this is our preview for multiplying fractions. We're going to have one-half times two-thirds. And how we're going to multiply fractions, one way, just multiply the numerator by the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. One times two is two. Two times three is six, divide by the two on top and bottom, and oh my goodness, we have one third. Huh, interesting. Our concept today is, well, multiplying fractions, and to multiply fractions, multiply the numerators, the top part of the fraction, and multiply the denominators, the bottom part of the fraction. So when we have something like the one-half times two-thirds that we just did, one times two is two, two times three is six, and we can simplify that to one-third. And in variables, if we have a over b times c over d, we'll multiply a times c, and we'll multiply b times d. And our note is neither um, b nor d can be zero. We can't have a denominator of zero. When multiplying two fractions, write the product in simplest form. The numerator and denominator of either fraction may have common factors. In this case, you can simplify before multiplying, and that's something I really strongly recommend. But in our first example, we have three-fifths times one-half. And when we talk about simplifying before multiplying, look at the three and the two. There are no factors that can divide into either three or two. What about the five or the one? Well, no. So just simply multiply across. Three times one is three. Five times two is 10. And our answer is 3 tenths. Now with 2 thirds times negative four, what we're going to do is rewrite this as 2 thirds times our negative four, we're going to place negative four over one. Now, look at your cross. Can I simplify the two and the one? Absolutely not. The three or the four or negative four? No. So just simply multiply. Two times negative four is negative eight. 
3 times 1 is 3. And negative 8 thirds can simplify into negative 2 and 2 thirds. And that is our solution there. Now what about the last one? I'm going to rewrite this with the negatives in the numerators. It just makes it much more simple to have the negatives attached with the numerators. And now, look at these for common factors. Nothing with the 1 or the 7, but what about the 3 and negative 3? Well, they're the same number, so you can divide both of those by 3. And the results there are 3 divided by 3 is 1. And negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. But don't lose track of those negatives. Don't lose track of the negatives. And now, negative 1 times negative 1 and negative times a negative is a positive 1. And 1 times 7 is 7. So our answer is 1 7. Now, multiplying mixed numbers. When multiplying a mixed number, you can rename the mixed number as an improper fraction. You can also multiply mixed numbers using the distributive property and mental math. Now, our little note here on the side that I do want to read us, if you forget to simplify before multiplying, you can always simplify the final answer. However, it is usually easier to simplify before multiplying, especially as we get into mixed numbers and convert those to improper fractions. Well, our first method is to rename the mixed number. So we're going to have 1 fourth times 8 times 9 is 72 plus 4 is 76. So that fraction is 76 ninths. Now, can I simplify any of the crosses here? 1 and 9? No, but 4 and 76 I can. I can divide both of those by 2, to start at least. And your result here is 1 half times 76 divided by 2 is 38 over 9. Anything else I can simplify? Well, yeah, they're both still even, so I can divide by 2. Now, if you recognized right away that you could divide by 4, good job. You can certainly do that, too. So now we have 1 over 1 times 38 divided by 2 is 19 over 9. And, well, 1 over 1 is just 1, so... <laughs> Basically, you're going to end up with 19 over 9 here. And when you get that into a mixed number again, you're left with 2 and 1 ninth. Now, what about using mental math? Well, this is a little different. What we're going to do is separate. So we're going to have our 1 fourth and then times 8 plus 4 ninths. Since 8 and 4 ninths is just 8 plus 4 ninths. Now when we distribute, and this says use mental math, but we're still showing some work here, especially since we're just learning this. So just because it says mental math does not mean for us today not to show work. Either way, we're going to have first 1 fourth times 8, and I'm going to write that right now as 8 over 1 plus one-fourth times four-ninths. Now, as I go to simplify this, I can divide the four and the eight each by four. You get one there and two there. And the four and four you can divide by four, so you get ones there and there. And so you have one times two is two, one times one is one, plus 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 9 is 9. So you have 2 over 1, which is just 2, 
plus one ninth, which equals, once again, two and one ninth. What about five and one third times three? Well, if we use our renaming the mixed number method, five and one third is 16 thirds times three, which is the same thing as three over one. And we go to simplify. We can divide the threes by, well, three, and that becomes one and one. And we're left with 16 times one is 16, one times one is one, which just equals, hey, 16. That was pretty quick. Now using mental math here, let's take our whole number term, three, and we're going to multiply that by five plus one-third, taking that five and one-third and breaking it apart. Well, if we distribute here, three times five is our first one, plus three times one-third. Well, three times five is 15, plus three over one times one-third you would get 3 over 3 if you just multiply on top and bottom. Or you can simplify this to 1 over 1 by dividing each by 3. And 1 over 1 times 1 over 1 is just 1 over 1. So you're left with 15 plus 1, which is, again, 16. So sometimes method 1 might be simpler. Sometimes method 2 may be simpler. Sometimes neither will be simple. You get to pick. What's not simple is having two negative mixed numbers. We have negative 1 and 7 eighths times negative 2 and 2 fifths. Let's get these both into improper fractions first. Save the negative for the end. Just save it for the end. 1 times 8 is 8, plus 7 is 15. So attach the negative with the 15, and you have negative 15 over 8 times 2 times 5 is 10 plus 2 is 12. Now attach the negative to the 12, and you get negative 12 fifths. So we just found a mixed number into improper fractions like we always do, and then we just put the negatives on here at the end. Now, let's see if we can simplify here by cross-simplifying. I can divide my 8 and my 12 by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. The negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. What about the negative 15 and 5? We'll divide each by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. And now I can multiply my numerator by my numerator. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and a negative times a negative is positive. 2 times 1 is 2, and 9 halves is the same thing as 4 and 1 half. Now we're not going to use mental math on this one since I have two mixed numbers. If I was multiplying a fraction by a mixed number or a whole number by a mixed number, we can tackle that one using method two. But for a mixed number times a mixed number, let's just stick to renaming the mixed numbers as improper fractions. Now we get to apply this to a word problem. Humans sleep about one third of each day. Let each year equal 365 and one fourth days, since we have our leap years to consider. Determine the number of days in a year the average human sleeps. Well, we're going to multiply. 1 third times 365 and 1 fourth. Sweet. So now let's turn 365 and 1 fourth into an improper fraction. Well, 365 times 4 is 1,460 plus the 1 is 1,461. So we end up with 1,461 over 4. Now, believe it or not, 
we can cross simplify this thing. And by what you ask? Well, not the one and the four. We, we, we can do the 1461 and the three. We actually can divide both by three, and here's how I know that. One plus four plus six plus one. That's 12. So your divisibility rules for three, if you can add up the digits of a number and get a number that's divisible by three, 12 divided by three is four, so that means I can take my 1,461 and actually divide that by three. And when you do that, you get 487. So that's 487, and that is 1. So 1 times 487 is, well, 487, and 1 times 4 is 4. So when you take 487 and then divide by 4, you result 1, 4, 0, 2, 0, 7, 1, minus 4, 3, really quickly, is 121 and 3 fourths. So the average human in a 365 and 1 fourth day year sleeps for 121 and 3 fourths days per year. Now, if you really wanted to, you could figure out if you're above average in sleep or below average in sleep, but you can do that on your own time. That's it. Good luck.